So what I have here is a tape deck from, I think, the late 80s, early 90s, and it's been sitting around a shelf for uh, about 20 years or so, I'm told. Um, it's kind of weird, because if you look at the, the view meter, there's only five blocks. Yeah, there's two dots per block, but there's only one LED behind there, I'd be willing to bet, uh, especially since the measurement goes per two blocks. The first two are negative decibel. The third looks like it is um, zero. And then the last two are positive. So kind of a weak, you know, view meter setup. But it does have settings for type 1, type 2, and what is this, type 4 cassettes. Um, which is interesting, as well as Dolby, uh, what is it, C and B. So it's kind of weird because usually when you would get these types of settings, you get a decent view meter. So um, it's kind of kind of weird the way they have it set up. But this was also around the time that, that cassette tapes were on their way out. And the cassette tech, the actual mechanism looks like something you would find in a boombox of the of the era. So it's very cheap, but they seem to work. So although it's a cheap design, it works very well. So I'm not really sure what's wrong with it. Um, like I said, it's been sitting on a shelf. Um, when you turn it on, you notice the light comes on, but it's very very dim and it's kind of that puke green LED color. And I'm not sure if you can hear that. Yeah, it doesn't sound too healthy. So I'm going to guess belts, but the motor doesn't sound too good. But maybe once we put a load on the motor, it'll uh, be okay. So it might just be, not, but just might just need belts. Now I've already taken the the screws out to make this go a little bit quicker. Let's take the top off it. So I want to clean this up and see how well it works and then probably turn around and sell it. But um, before I can do that, I want to make sure it actually performs pretty well and, you know, it doesn't need a new motor. First things first, let's get this out of, let's get the front panel off. Alright, so this belt... Yeah, this just goes over the counter. It's not too bad. It's kind of, it could be replaced. I think that would be fine to work because it's not really under much load, but that'll get replaced. Um, yeah, there's two belts, it looks like. Yeah, there's a belt here. Ooh, that's just falling apart. And that's from age. And then there's another one here. And that also is, yeah, junk. So let's pull the motor out. Now, if it is a bad motor, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's the end of the road. I could either see if we can make it, maybe grease it up a little bit inside. Or uh, might have another motor I can swap it out with. These use a, um, like a speed control circuit. So it's, a PD it's usually a PWM based. So even if it's a different motor, um, You know, you can make it work. There isn't much. Yeah, there is. Yeah, it looks like that bushing in there is cooked. Let me see if you can hear this.
It's not sounding too good, but let's put a bell on it and see what it does. As I'm turning it, I can feel something clicking inside of it. And there's a lot of play. I can hear it buzzing as I spin it. So that could be a brush, broken brush. But um, let's put some belts on it and just see what happens. It doesn't really talk about how the belt goes. But there is a parts diagram from what I saw over here. All right, so maybe I'm just reading this wrong, but it looks like but here's the cap stand and the flywheel. And it looks like both belts go around it. And then I, obviously it's got to go around the motor. This one's a little bit bigger. 98 is a little bit bigger. And 98 is uh, belt square, belt square. Doesn't really say anything. So what it could be is that both belts go around the motor and here. And one goes around the motor here and this. Uh, it seems kind of strange. Um, usually it would go around this and this, as well as this and this. Like you would have two separate belts. One that drives the capstan and one that drives this. And this is what drives the, um, the take-up spools. So that just seems weird to me. Um, we're going to try it my way and see how it goes. And I could be completely wrong because it may need to be reverse direction, but we're going to find out. And then go to the top of this. So just to recap, what I did is the, the upper rung of the cap stand pulley goes to the bottom rung of the motor. And this here, this pulley, I believe it was the bottom rung goes to the bottom rung. The bottom rung of this goes to the bottom rung of the cap stand. I don't know if that's right, but we're going to find out just in a few minutes here. Okay, that comes off. All right, so that's turning the right way, and that's turning the right way. That's taken up, and the pinch roller is pulling the right way. Cool. All right, so let's put this thing back together, and we'll see if it plays the tape. And yes, I know I'm resting the faceplate on the side of the chassis here, and it could possibly scratch it. I'm trying to be careful not to move it around when it's on there. Only doing that because of the camera and trying to keep everything in the right position. All right, it's not completely screwed together, but let's just see how it works or how well it works, or if it works. So I got a test cassette here. It's not Luther Vandross. It's, uh, well, it was at one time. No longer is. I just use, I just over, you know, re-recorded over it. It's good enough for a cassette, for, you know, a test tape. And I keep some music on here that's royalty, yeah, excuse me, royalty free. And I have some test tones on here so we can test the speed. So let's see how we do. So it's turning. Sounds like it's dragging.
Yeah, it's definitely running a little slow. Also, it sounds like the azimuth might need to be adjusted on the head. Let me just see how... His belts are a little bit tight, but not too bad. They may loosen up over time, but... Um, we can fix that, but let's... See what I was saying? Each of these groups only have one LED behind them. Yeah, it's definitely running slow. Okay, so what I have is a one kilohertz sine wave recorded. I think it's the next track. So let's fast forward. Yeah, there you go. All right, so what we're going to do is... All right, so to test the speed, I'm going to use my multimeter. And we'll just lay this right here so you can see it. And this is a 1 kilohertz uh, sine wave that I have recorded to it. So we're just going to tap into the output right here and see what it is. Yeah, that's running a little bit slow. And it's dancing around because there's a little bit of wow and flutter. Both from the original deck uh, combined with this one. And it's progressively getting slower. So, to adjust that, we need a small screwdriver, small flathead. All right, so to adjust the speed of the motor, there's usually in the back of these, this little hole here, it's felt covered. And if you put a small flathead screwdriver in there, and feel around, you're gonna meet some resistance and you'll be able to turn it. And you'll feel there's a little potentiometer in there. And let me turn this down so it doesn't deafen you. I don't know how loud that is on camera. All right, 945. Let's get it. Let's get it as close to one kilohertz as possible. Now, if you're replacing this, and I know some people are going to say, you know, Dude, you gotta wait for the belts to break in. Yeah, you're right, you gotta wait. These belts are actually pretty tight right now, so I may have to adjust this later. But that's pretty close. For a consumer deck, that's damn close. Okay, so now the speed looks good. Let's try this again. Much better. The other thing I want to do is adjust the azimuth. Now to show you how to do that, essentially what the azimuth is, let me turn this off so that I can rotate this. All right. So in here you have the head. Now mind you, I haven't cleaned anything yet. This is just, we just put belts in it and adjusted the speed. So this cap stand needs to be cleaned. Wow, the pinch roller is filthy. Head's pretty dirty, but it looks like it's not worn too bad. So I don't think this is really used all too, too much. Um, I don't think it was ever cleaned either. All right, so you notice you have the head here. And as the tape goes, you want the head to be 
right along parallel with the tape. But if the head is a little bit off, you're going to lose some high end. And if you notice in those recordings, it didn't have a lot of high end. So what we're going to do is there's a little screw here. On the left side of the head, on an auto reverse, you have both sides, but on this is just a single direction, so it's going to be on the left hand side of the head. You want to put a screwdriver on there while the tape's playing. The best way to do it is just play a tape that you're used to. Actually, it doesn't even have to be something you're used to hearing, just a tape, and adjust it until it sounds the best. So I guess I have to turn it on, huh? Sounds worse. Not too far. There we go. So, see? Sounds much better now. So let's run this back and give it a listen. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up and um, take this plate off, take the mechanism out as well as this board, clean behind there, get all this dust out of here, um, clean out the pots uh, for the different controls, make sure that they're not uh, scratchy at all. And um, I'm going to run some tapes through it hooked up to my stereo, make sure it sounds okay, because that, that low end issue kind of concerns me, but that could also just be, I'm using crappy computer speakers here to listen to it, so that could be that, but it sounded a little bit distorted to me. Um, I'm going to run some other tapes through it, some commercial tapes, and see how it sounds, and also I'm going to have to put this back, all these wires back nice when I eventually do it. This will make a good tape deck. I'm going to sell it, but it's going to be sold fairly cheap, so that way if somebody's looking to get back into cassettes or get getting into cassettes for the first time or you know recording on analog this will be a good little tape deck for them because like i said it, it has dolby c and b as well as uh you know bias settings for tape one tape or you know type one type two and type four cassettes so chrome and metal and normal so i think it'll be a good little cassette deck for somebody so so if you have any questions comments suggestions leave them down below and um I'll be seeing you next time. Bye-bye.